as part of the sustaining ecosystems topic, you'll have studied tropical rainforests. Within the tropical rainforest topic, for the exam, you need to know a case study about an attempt to sustainably manage an area of rainforest, such as ecotourism, at a local or regional level. Let's just take a moment to remind ourselves about what sustainability is. It's about meeting the needs of today without compromising the needs of future generations. And to do that, it's got to be environmentally and economically and socially sustainable. So, for example, if I was to start cutting down a load of trees in the rainforest, that might earn me a lot of money in the short term today, but it's going to ruin the environment for the future, and future generations have got no way of making their living from that area of rainforest, and so that's clearly not sustainable. On the other hand, if I was to do what's called selective logging, just cutting down one or two trees, and then replacing those trees by planting new ones, then that is much more sustainable. One sustainable idea is encouraging ecotourism. Ecotourism is effectively environmentally friendly tourism. It aims to conserve the natural environment and as well as local communities, and so it is sustainable for the future. Basically, this kind of tourism has a very low environmental impact, as you can see from some of the images. So we know what sustainability is and we know what ecotourism is. So now let's look at our example of our case study to manage an area of rainforest sustainably at a local level. We learned about Manu Adventures. They're a eco an ecotourism company that operate within the Manu National Park. The Manu National Park is a small area of rainforest within Peru, but it's obviously all part of the much, much larger Amazon rainforest. Manu Adventures is our ecotourism company that, that set up work in this rainforest and what they try to do is show tourists the beauty of the rainforest but in a sustainable way and so this helps to educate and inform tourists about rainforests which can lead those tourists to making informed choices when they get home about the products that they buy as well as things that they might do that might affect rainforest regions. The hope is that those tourists will then tell their friends as well. Specifically, what do Mano Adventures do to manage the rainforest sustainably? Well, first of all, the lodges that guests stay in have been designed to be sustainable. The building materials are found locally. That in turn means that you don't have to build uh, roads, which would involve cutting down the rainforest to transport materials to the, the build site. The electricity comes from solar cells on the roofs of lodges. So again, this is going to have a very small carbon footprint compared to burning fossil fuels. The lodges themselves, by being made of local materials, are designed to blend in and so that will have a minimal impact on disturbing the wildlife. Even things like the shampoos themselves must be biodegradable so that that uh, water with shampoo in it doesn't then pollute local water supplies. To be truly sustainable, Something can't just be protecting the environment, it also has to be providing money and jobs. And so Mano Adventures does this by providing jobs for local people wherever possible. For example, as a boat driver or a cook or a tourist guide showing the people the local area. And so they will do this through a range of activities. For example, bird watching. They'll have um, a zip line and this will allow tourists to see the canopy without causing footpath erosion or disturbing wildlife at the ground level. It's also going to be better for the tourists because they're going to see much more up in the canopy. In summing up the overall success of this management strategy, you would say that it allows the rainforest to be protected while still bringing in money and providing jobs for local people. And so this makes it environmentally, economically and socially sustainable. However, on the negative side, you would say that tourists are always going to have some negative impact. For example, dropping litter or disturbing the wildlife. And there's also the fact that the tourists might have travelled long distances by plane to get there, and that's going to produce a large carbon footprint.